Good morning. It's Wednesday, May 25th, 2022. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for your journey today. Our devotion today is entitled, Of Greater and Lesser. Now, Scripture, 2 Chronicles, chapter 34. Then he, meaning Josiah, gave these orders to Hilkiah, Achikam, son of Shaphan, Akbor, son of Micaiah, Shaphan, the court secretary, and Asiah, the king's personal advisor. Go to the temple and speak to the Lord for me and for all the remnant of Israel and Judah. Inquire about the words written in the scroll that has been found. For the Lord's great anger has been poured out on us because our ancestors have not obeyed the word of the Lord. We have not been doing everything this scroll says we must do. So Hilkiah and the other men went to the new quarter of Jerusalem to consult with the prophet Huldah. She was the wife of Shalom, son of Tikvah, son of Haras, the keeper of the temple wardrobe. She said to them, The Lord, the God of Israel, has spoken. Go back and tell the man who sent you, This is what the Lord says. I am going to bring disaster on this city and its people. All the curses written in the scroll that was read to the king of Judah will come true. For my people have abandoned me and offered sacrifices to pagan gods, and I am very angry with them for everything they have done. My anger will be poured out on this place, and it will not be quenched. But go to the king of Judah, who sent you to seek the Lord, and tell him, This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says concerning the message you have just heard. You were sorry and humbled yourself before God when you heard his words against this city and its people. You humbled yourself and tore your clothing in despair, and wept before me in repentance. And I have indeed heard you, says the Lord. So I will not send the promised disaster until after you have died and been buried in peace. You yourself will not see the disaster I am going to bring on this city and its people. So they took her message back to the king. Then the king summoned all the elders of Judah and Jerusalem. And the king went up to the temple of the Lord with all the people of Judah and Jerusalem, along with the priests and Levites, all the people from the greatest to the least. There the king read to them the entire book of the covenant that had been found in the Lord's temple. The king took his place of authority beside the pillar and renewed the covenant in the Lord's presence. He pledged to obey the Lord by keeping all his commands, laws, and decrees with all his heart and soul. He promised to obey all the terms of the covenant that were written in the scroll, and he required everyone in Jerusalem and the people of Benjamin to make a similar pledge. The people of Jerusalem did so, renewing their covenant with God, the God of their ancestors. So Josiah removed all detestable idols from the entire land of Israel and required everyone to worship the Lord their God. And throughout the rest of his lifetime, they did not turn away from the Lord, the God of their ancestors. In the 21st century culture of the United States, this act of King Josiah would be considered treason. He took the scriptures and he held it up to God and vowed he would live by it. A good model for any world leader. And then, the treason to modern day American, King Josiah required everyone else in his service and all the citizens of the land to pledge likewise. I feel a storm brewing here between the modern-day culturally hallowed icon of individual freedom and a Josiah model of surrendering all to the will of God. The former being popular, ingrained from the first time we say the Pledge of Allegiance or sing the Star-Spangled Banner, is no more an outcome of the latter, but the very target at which every allegiance is aimed these days. Yet, biblically, our personal freedom is still the lesser compared to the greater claim on our lives by the Creator, the God of Josiah's scriptures. For you today, I get it. As those who honor a God who gave us free will, we can't abandon the quest for liberty. 
But I get it even more that when it comes to obeying God, that personal liberty is the first idol that must go. Anything other than God in first place is an idol. Such is the essence of his first commandment found in Exodus chapter 20. Then God gave the people all these instructions. I am the Lord your God who rescued you from the land of Egypt, the place of your slavery. You must not have any other God but me. You chew on that as you hit the rocky road with Jesus today. Have a blessed day.